Okay, so we are continuing English today. Today we're going to talk about literature, philosophy, history, art, and architecture in Rome. Well, we're continuing with talking about main idea today. So that's the activity you're going to go through. That's why I'm not going through the standard again. Uh, literature. So in particular, with regards to literature, the Romans owed a great deal to the Greeks in regards to literature. Many Romans spoke Greek and imitated Greek styles in prose and poetry. Remember, the Romans felt a connection to the Greeks to a certain extent. But the greatest Roman writers actually used Latin to create their own literature. Uh, Latin was the language of the Romans. So the greatest Roman writers actually used Latin. Poetry. In the epic poem, poem the Aeneid, Virgil tries to show that Rome's past is as heroic as that of Greece. He linked his epic to Homer's work. And remember, we mentioned Homer earlier. Homer wrote the Odyssey and the Iliad, the Iliad of which talks about the Trojan War, the Odyssey about Odysseus's passage back home. He linked his epic to Homer's work by telling how Aeneas escaped from Troy to found Rome. Remember, we spoke about Romans having some sort of belief in this, uh, connecting Greek, Greece with Rome, about Aeneas. And he wrote the Aeneid shortly after Augustus came to power, and he hoped it would unite Rome after years of civil war. So after years of civil war, when Augustus comes to power, he's hoping that the Aeneid, which united both Greek and Roman ideas together, would help to be able to unite Rome together. Other poets used verse to satirize. Now that's a vocabulary word for you guys. To satirize means to make fun of. So he used this verse to satirize Roman society, to make fun of Roman society. Other poets did. Uh, here are some examples of some poets, one of whose poem you're going to be reading. Uh, Horace's satires were gentle, while Juvenal and Martial were more biting. So Horace's satires were a lot more gentle on people. Juvenal and Martial were very critical. Martial's poems were so harsh, in fact, that he had to use fake names to protect himself. Um, we talked about the Aenid. This is a painting from a scene from the Aenid, a more modern painting, of course, but this is a painting of a scene from the Aenid. And these are the three poets that we just mentioned. This is Horace, Horace, Juvenal, and Marshall. All right, history. So the Roman historians typically followed the rise and fall of Roman power. So the rise of Roman power as it was rising and the fall of it. Historian Livy sought to rouse patriotic feelings and restore traditional Roman values by recalling Rome's historic past. So he hoped to rise patriotic feelings, feelings of goodness and strength in your own country by talking about the past of Rome. In History of Rome, he recounts tales like that of Cincinnatus. Remember, we mentioned Cincinnatus was the one who was made a dictator and then gave the power back before six months were up. So he mentioned uh, tales of people like him, uh, very famous Romans. Uh, another historian, Tacitus, wrote bitterly about Augustus as his successors. Now, this is kind of important, guys, because it shows that not everybody was on board with what happened regarding the Roman Empire. Not everybody was on board with the transition from the Republic to becoming an empire. Uh, he admired, in fact, the simple culture of the Germans who would end up uh, invading the empire later, but at the time lived at Rome's northern frontier. So Tacitus uh, felt that Augustus and his successors had destroyed Roman liberty. And there are a lot of people that feel that way. Uh, so this is a modern statue representing Tacitus, the one who did not really like uh, what had happened to Rome with Augustus and his successors. Okay, philosophy. So Romans borrowed much of their philosophy from the Greeks. And Hellenistic philosophy of Stoicism, remember Hellenism is, was spread, was what was spread through Greek culture as a result of Alexander the Great. So Hellenistic philosophy of Stoicism impressed Roman thinkers like Emperor Marcus Aurelius. And the Stoics stressed the importance of duty and acceptance of one's fate. So those are two main things. If you're wondering, well, what is Stoicism when you mentioned it, when we mentioned it regarding Marcus Aurelius, the emperor? Uh, it stressed the importance of duty and acceptance of one's fate. So doing the things that you are supposed to be doing, uh, that is a moral obligation and accepting that you will die one day, essentially. Uh, this, these Roman philosophers also showed a concern for the well-being of all people, an idea that would end up being reflected in Christian teaching. Okay, so art. Like the Greeks, Roman sculptors stressed realism, portraying their subjects with every wart and vein in place. So they would build very realistic statues that showed the imperfections of these people as well.
Uh, the Romans also broke new ground by revealing an individual's character and statues. So these statues could show emotions on their faces. You know, they got much better about doing that. Uh, a statue of a soldier, a rider, or an emperor uh, might capture an expression of smugness, discontent, uh, any sort of emotion. But there were some Roman sculptures that were more idealistic. Uh, Augustus, for example, he was not necessarily a very handsome person. He was not a very imposing person when you look at him, but they were able to make sculptures of him that made him a symbol of power and leadership, something that you'd want to look up to. And Romans beautified their homes with works of art as well. Uh, examples of these works were preserved in Pompeii, a city buried by volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. So we can see a lot of these works of art that people had in their homes by these leftover homes that were covered by volcanic ash during this uh, volcanic eruption. And these artists depicted scenes from Roman literature and daily life in frescoes and mosaics. And a mosaic, that's another vocabulary word for you guys, so Romans had these as well, is a picture made from chips of colored stone or glass. Now in regards to architecture, Greeks aimed for simple elegance in architecture, while the Romans emphasized grandeur, grandness. Uh, palaces, temples, and stadiums stood as monuments to Roman power and dignity. So they built these to show representation of power to a certain extent. And Romans improved on devices like the column and the arch. And they also innovated using concrete. Uh, we use concrete today, but the Romans had a sort of a different formula. They used concrete as a building material and they developed the rounded dome to roof large spaces. The most famous of these dome structures being the, par the Pantheon, the Pantheon which is a temple to all the Roman gods, which still stands in Rome. Here is a picture of what the Pantheon looks like. At this point, please work on your horse poetry assignment in your Canvas portal. Thank you.